There are already a lot of videos about the Grosjean crash yesterday, but I wanted to have a closer look at what happened in detail. How did the barrier split? How did the drivetrain separate? How was it possible that fuse spilled out and ignited? First of all, the angle with which he hit the barrier was not too extreme, but the problem was the sharp nose of his Formula 1 car pierced between the lower and middle guardrail and went deep into the barrier. If we take a closer look at the pictures, we can see how the middle guardrail failed on the right hand side at its weakest point, around the holes of the mounting points. The cross section of the guardrail is smaller here due to the holes. If we have the same force at a smaller cross section, stresses are higher and it failed here. This now opened the middle section of the barrier and the disaster started. The car could dive deep into the barrier, hitting the upper guardrail with the halo and bending upper and lower guardrail to create an even bigger hole. This was the first part which created this unusual crash. The second part is that Grosjean's nose unfortunately hit the barrier just on the right hand side of the pole. This pole was cutting along the monocoque like a knife and because of the direction of how the car hit the barrier, the car was pressed against this pole while diving deeper into the structure. This cleanly cut off all the side bits of the monocoque like the wheel, the side impact structure and finally reached the back part of the monocoque where the cross section gets a lot wider to house the fuel tank and it just ripped off the whole side wall of the monocoque. From my time in Formula 1 I know how this part of the chassis is designed and I couldn't believe what I saw here. The fuel bladder was exposed but from what I can see on the pictures it's not ruptured. If we have a look at how the side was ripped off we can see that the missing panel was cracking right through the fuel flap. The opening is the only weak point of the fuel tank and this cover was simply ripped off so the fuel tank was open. This explains why the explosion looked like more than 2 liters but less than 100 kg and it immediately covered the safety cell in fuel which caused the fire. I'm wondering what ignited the fuel and I think it would have been sparks when the post was grinding along the monocoque. Because the car hit the post on the right hand side, the front of the car was diverted to the right which created a slight spin. This meant that the back would hit the barrier on the left hand side of the pole. With this momentum and with the left hand side of the monocoque already ripped off, the engine was only fixed on the right hand side at this point. The survival cell turned around 90 degrees already and was dragged against the pole and it looks like this is when the back end split. If we take a closer look at the back part of the car, we can see the big monocoque panel still attached to the engine on the left hand side of the car and the battery in front of it. One thing that worried me was that it looks like the monocoque also got cracked right in front of the forward halo mount which could have caused another disaster. So in summary it looks to me as if the main reason for this extreme accident was the collapse of the middle guardrail and it also raises the question if having guardrails like this is really the right kind of barriers for formula racing cars. A concrete wall gives you higher initial acceleration when a car crashes into it but the car slides along and cannot get trapped like Grosjean's car did yesterday. The extreme damage of the car was a result of crash situations the car was not really designed for. Grosjean was extremely lucky to escape this accident the way he did because this could have been a lot worse. So what do you think? Should they use different barriers or should they improve the design of Formula 1 cars? Let me know what you think in the comments below.